Um, so, this is Pimpy Macro Pill. I'm Mark Allen. Yeah. I work at Photobox. Uh, we're hiring. Come speak to me or Amari or Zephra or Leon or Ben afterwards if you want to find out about the exciting things we do with Pearl. But I'm not going to talk about that today, I'm going to talk about Pearl uh, with my Mac and with your Mac, hopefully. Um, as I said just now, before the last of you came in, um, these, the, uh, this URL here, pimpyourmacforpearl.com, the show notes, uh, which contain a copy of these slides. They contain links to all the resources, so I haven't bothered putting URLs on the slides. And I'm going to go quite fast, so don't worry if, I, you, if you get lost, you can always go and look at the slides later. I'm going to assume a few things. I'm assuming that you guys know Pearl, or you're at the wrong conference, or at least you're in the wrong track. You should be just down there. Um, I'm assuming that you've used Mac OS X, otherwise this is definitely the wrong talk. And I assume that you know Unix because I can see some beards in the world. <laughs> um, so, let's talk about Mac and Pearl. Uh, Pearl, ships, uh, Pearl ships on Mac, uh, but it's only Pearl 5.12 or 5.10, so it comes with both. Um, these are deprecated or no longer supported. Um, but worse than that, Apple keep breaking them. Um, they broke the ability to build XS modules about a few months back. They've now fixed it. Uh, they've been known to break the CPAN toolchain. Um, so don't use the system pillar. That's not my recommendation. I recommend you build your own. Um, so you install the developer tools, which came with your Mac, or you can download them in form of download X code from the Mac App Store, which is free. Um, You'll need to do that if you want to build uh, XS modules with the core Perl anyway, so you might as well. And then you run this command here, provided by Leah, in fact, earlier. Um, and that goes off and installs a Perl group Perl in your home directory, um, latest. And then you run this mystical command here to copy stuff into your an environment plist, which basically means that when a, ex a program runs Perl from your GUI, like say your text editor, you want to shell out to run a script or something, it's going to use that Perl. So that's the basics covered of, about Perl, but what can we do with Perl on a Mac? Well, a Mac is Unix, so you can do things from the terminal. Everything you know about Unix is basically still true. Um, so what else is there? Well, what can you do with special on Mac? Well, you can talk to the clipboard. Um, I use this a lot. Uh, there's two command line utilities, pp-copy and pp-paste. pp-copy, you basically copies from standard in and, write, uh, and writes to the clipboard, and pp-paste is reverse and takes the clipboard and writes it to standard out. Um, what do I use this for? Um, simple example, I keep notes of interesting things I find on the internet in the shared file. Um, so here's a simple Perl script. There's a shared file, synced with Dropbox, <coughs> which kind of handles conflicts, but only kind of. And there's what you might expect pasting into it, uh, just by reading from one and writing to the other. And the, the reverse is true. When I want to get output, it turns out the clipboard is actually quite a useful place to put output from programs that I can then paste into my editor into the right place. So another example program, what's in my error log since the last time I restarted Apache? Another Perl script. You guys can all read that? Squinting it back, but yes. Uh, a big block of type file logic to go backwards up through a file to look for resuming normal operations. And then just writing it out to PB copy, which puts it in the clipboard. So basic input output can be done that way, uh, which makes it very useful for putting to a GUI application. But there are other applications that are, what happens if I want to see something down on the screen? So, this is the UK. Welcome to foreign people. It rains here a lot. Um, I need to know if it's going to rain, so I need to know if I'm going to take my umbrella with me today. And this information is available on the internet. The BBC provide an RSS feed. Uh, but how do I display it on my Mac? If I, well, I want to hit a key and it'll show me. Um, well, there's a utility called Growl that I'm sure you've all got installed already, which is capable of throwing up these little dialogues on the screen. Uh, uh, all different kinds of applications use it, and as you'd imagine, you can access it from Perl. In fact, of course, with being Perl, there's more than one way to do it. Uh, there's Mac Growl, which is the original granddaddy talks Apple events, which is Apple's way of communicating between processes, and is really, really hard to install. Uh, there's Growl Tiny, which just shells out to the command line script, which ships with Growl. Uh, you can talk to it over TCP. 
you can wrap the Cocoa libraries that um, do the Apple events, blah, 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 reasonably easy to install. Or you can just use Growl any, which will use any one of the ones you've got installed. But the principle is easy. Um, first of all, you register your application. So I'm registering weather here. And I'm providing an icon, which is a URL of a little picture of a cloud so that when it displays it under GUI, it has something that looks nice. Grabbing the information, and then I'm just sending notifications. So register once, but you can register as many times as you can register at the beginning of every script if you want, and then you can send these notifications. And that looks something like this on my system. Well, not today it doesn't, but it, it did a month or two ago. Um, <coughs> this is the, the, the big text is the first argument, the second uh, description is the, big, is the smaller text. And you can configure this to look however you want by using um, the Growl GUI, which is part of System Preferences. Um, here we are. I want music video, which is this music video thing at the bottom. I can decide to keep it on screen. I can decide to turn it so it's clicked. I can decide it to go away. If I'm saying the application decides so it's controlled by the full script. And do things show up in there the first time you've registered them? Sorry? Do you think show up Yeah, they the just show up straight away first time you've registered them. Once you run the register command, it, the, this will be in there. <coughs> And it's taking a nice icon, and it's, it's fairly straightforward to use. And you can keep, you can use obviously you want one one of them if you want a particular style. You can also have different types of notifications displaying in different styles. It's uh, as complicated or as simple as you need to make it. So that's generating output. How about getting things in from stuff I'm doing on the Mac? Um, so when I'm a build programmer, I'm pretending to be a manager. And when I'm pretending to be a manager, what I am mace doing is looking at our bug tracker, our task tracker, and trying to work out what we're doing and who's meant to be doing it. So this is our awful bug tracking system. And I want to know what we're doing, in this case making some tea, and basically who's doing it, Claris. So I want a string like this copied to my clipboard. And I'm looking at this in Safari, as you can just see off the top of the screen. So how do I do that? I use one of my modules. This is one of the few things I've actually written here. Max Safari JavaScript, which allows me to run an embedded block of JavaScript and pass it to the browser and have the browser return with uh, the return statement. So here I'm returning the document title and the result of running some jQuery stuff. So I can remotely control my browser. Now obviously this can get as complicated as you want. You can manipulate the page, you can make the browser go to different locations, you can put out extract information to debug, you can use this to extract whole chunks of web pages. Kind of useful, but very robust for an example here. So that's kind of things that you can do on your Mac, but how do you do that? It's not like you're going to go to the command line and type these commands every time you want to do, run something like this. Uh, on the Mac, there's about five different ways to do this. Um, first of which is launchers. So you've probably used a launcher before. Um, yeah, so you basically hit key combination and you type in part of a command and the system searches for what command you're probably going to mean and produces a drop down list or a collection of these things and you hit return and it runs it. And there's a bunch of them. There's launch bar, which is the original, the original commercial one. There's uh, Quicksilver, which is probably most popular. It's free. It's almost abandoned, but then came back again, and it's one that popularized it. And then there's the new government bot, which is uh, um, Alfred, which requires, uh, which is free, but requires a paid upgrade, and is available from the Mac App Store. But they basically all do this same thing, where you specify, I want to search a directory, e.g. my bin directory, and then it indexes all the files in there, and you can type them and convert them. And that's very useful for running post scripts. Another thing that you could do is have macro software, where you monitor your keyboard. So, um, here's an example. Uh, uh, whenever I type, so type year, month, day, Q, Q, it auto completes it. Uh, and when I, when I happen to type the word Acme, uh, like so, oh, meta Q, Q, it gives me a, back, it gives me a, a uh, Batman sound effect, which is generated by a PostScript using Acme meta syntactic. And again, these are fairly straightforward to set up. Uh, the abbreviation I want, the fact uh, that I want to run a shell script, and the script I want to run. And so these can either obviously, you can have them replace text, you can also 
how they start a process, etc., etc. Um, what else have we got? Oh, services. Hmm. Services are very cool. Um, there, here's a standard problem. I'm typing into a browser, into a text box. I want to type Markdown, but actually the website wants me to support, um, to type in HTML. So I want to type the Markdown and convert it within the browser into um, HTML. Now, the macOS way of doing this is services. It's not a very well known part of Mac OS X, but what it does is it allows you in any Coco, that is to say any normal program, to either read in the selected text, replace the selected text, or filter the selected text, I read it in and write it back out again. And this can be created in Perl. So, an uh, example, so there's a form where I'm going to type some markdown in, I'm going to highlight it, I'm then going to go to the services menu and use a service I've written called convert map down to HTML, click on it, and it's going to replace it for me. Um, and of course, the postscript for that is very, very short. To create services, you need to use a utility called this service, which is uh, free and is linked from the show notes. Uh, oh, penultimate way, uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, everything on the sun can set keyboard shortcuts, global keyboard shortcuts. Your launcher can, services can be bound in the menu system, and Microsoft are combined key shortcuts often. Um, this is very, very powerful, but you have to use it sparingly, otherwise you end up overriding all this other system keyboard shortcuts, and you end up using 17 different keys to get some stuff. The most complicated and the most powerful way is, of course, to write an application. Now, you can write a Cocoa app, an app like this, in Perl, using camel bones. Um, that works, it's very good. Um, it's quite complicated and it's more than I'm going to go into. I've actually given a 40 minute talk on it separately and I really don't have time to go over it. The other simpler thing that you can do is just write part of an application. So this kind of application could be pretty much put together by GUI dragging and dropping. Then you shell out to so something like this. So, uh, And essentially the logic to do that is like this which I'm not going to go into, but I have linked some very easy to understand articles that can be uh, uh, from the show notes. So, let's see, uh, mm, five minutes, okay. Doing things automatically with Perl. Um, so I've shown you how to install new Perl, I've shown you how to, uh, things you can do with Perl, I've shown you how to do things manually by launching them or running them when you do something with Perl. What about doing things automatically by Perl, with things where Perl does stuff for you? Um, for example, wouldn't it be nice if my downloads folder was tidied up for me? So after a day, everything that's in it gets moved into a per month archive directory. And that's a Perl script that does that. But the details of that aren't important. How we run that is, so this is Mac OS X, it's not Linux. We don't have an D, and we don't, critically, for this, we don't have Cron. What we do have is a Mac system, called LaunchD. <coughs> um, what is LaunchD? LaunchD is the command and control infrastructure for, uh, for starting demons on Mac OS X. Essentially controlled by uh, PBIS files, which are Apple's name for basically an XML file in a particular dialect. They are stored in particular places. For example, the Cron equivalent ones are stored in library launch agents. And you give them this weird reverse notation, so name com, pimp your Mac, with Perl scripts, tidy, penis, familiar to Java programs. Um, but they look something like that. Um, importantly, that's the name of the, the script I'm running, so my Perl and the command line argument, the second argument is the name of the script that I'm passing to Perl. I am saying, I'd like it to run every hour, please. And I'm saying, don't keep it alive, which means that when it exit ends, it will just shut down normally and it will make no attempt to run it again until an hour has passed. Um, another use for launch DR I'll explain is a, it's a similar problem to the one I had before, which is, uh, again, writing markdown and posting HTML. Um, it's tiresome to use the service when I'm trying to preview what it looks like in HTML. What I want is a simple live preview. Essentially what I want is, when I have a text file like this, I want to see a live preview like this. So what I need is a web server that's listening and can match the file names up and convert and do a preview for me. Which, of course, the writing in Dancer is ridiculously simple. Um, and running from the command line is ridiculously simple. But I 
I'm lazy. And I'll forget to do that, and I'll boot things up, and it won't work. And uh, So what I wanted to do is start and boot. And you do an indeed uh, do that on a Linux box, but this is Mac OS X, so we need to use LaunchD. So another PS file, this time in library launch agents. Uh, there's my big PLS file. As before, program arguments. And note the keys that are missing. I've, I haven't sent, I've taken out the uh, start interval and I've taken out the disabling of keep alive. So basically, this will allow the Mac to make sure that that plaque demon's always up. If I kill it, it will come back again. Uh, can be used for a whole host of handy monitoring stuff. Um, Let's talk. Oh, okay. One. I'll talk about the last thing, and then I'll I'll skip some of the other stuff. Uh, a last problem that I, I have addressed on my Mac is baking static HTML. So, quite a few page, HTML pages I make are static. They they're not dynamic. They're just uploaded to a standard host. But it's not quite as simple as previewing the HTML on the page. I still have to build the page with templates, convert the markdown to HTML, thumbnail images, convert images into sprites. Combine a string, combine a string, compress, version, path, assets, many different things. Um, so it's, when I'm previewing this, I need a watcher demon to help me out here. Every time I hit save in my editor, I want the site to rebuild. Um, the traditional way to do that would be to stat the directory. On, on Linux. Of course, the Mac can do better than this. It can use a technology called FS Events, which was introduced in 10.04. And it's the basis for Apple's time machine technology. And basically, the operating system, in a vastly oversimplified way, keeps track of every change to the file system in a kind of log which you can programmatically query. And you can programmatically query that from Perl using the Mac FS events module. If you can get it to compile, see the notes in the show notes on how to do that. Um, but here we are. I'm monitoring this directory here. And whenever there's an event, Say something has changed. That would typically be a rebuild step. Um, and oh, and it, it essentially works as you might expect. So wait, wait, wait there. And again, this is another test. And it notices that something has changed, and so on and so on. So, oh, and I'm 12 seconds over time. So, uh, any questions? Yes? For the stuff you keep in the PLS files, do you have a way of keeping that nicely source controlled so that if your map blows up, you have a way of getting it all back? Um, does the easy and the hard way. The easy way is just to, um, is to move that directory into inside a Dropbox folder and keep track of it. The harder way is to use Git and then just remember to check it in, but obviously you have to remember to push it to somewhere and you have to have somewhere to push it yeah. outside of your Mac so that you think when your Mac blows up you don't have this problem. Unless of course you're backing up a lot. Any other questions? No? Great. The slides are there and more importantly links to all of the, the biospecific technologies that I've mentioned. Thank you very much. <laughs>